We're going to talk about raised bed gardening with important tips avoiding eight common mistakes. Mistake number one, picking the wrong spot. Most plants need at least six hours of sunlight, so location of the sun is a must. Or is the plants getting too much sun? Number two, forgetting about a water source. Take notice how you're going to water your plants with ease so they will not get stressed and die. Number three, making the beds too big or too small. We want to be able to reach with ease to maintenance the plants, but also big enough to get a bumper cropper. Number four, building with the wrong material. Once you build your raised garden bed, you want it to last for years. Number five, not using the best soil. The plants need the right nutrients to grow with prevention of disease control. Number six, selecting oversized plants and not pruning with need. Number seven, skipping mulch, or do we need to add mulch? Number eight, not protecting your plants. Animals can destroy the plants, with, especially chickens. No frost freeze protection, variety of pests and diseases. So we need to daily to check on our plants. Many people wonder how deep should a raised garden bed be? Well, that should be at least eight to 12 inches of soil, but at least eight inches of soil for healthy root growth. A depth of eight to 12 inches will be enough for most gardening situations. What do I need to put into the bottom of a raised garden bed? The most used material for a raised garden bed, or should we say a raised garden bed liner, are cardboard, mulch, yes, concrete, hardware wire, fabric, and plastic. But each one must be pro have proper drainage. They serve as a, a barrier between the garden soil and the ground to stop the weeds from coming through and to keep out the toxins and other pests in the ground. Is it cheaper to buy or build a raised garden bed? A raised garden bed requires more material, upfront costs. In-ground garden beds are far more simple and affordable, though you still wind up purchasing at least some compost and amendments to get started. A few ways to make, or a few ways to, to make filling raised garden beds more economical is to go to your local place and buy quality soil in bulk that they will load for you, but you would have to shovel it off of your truck or your trailer. For example, topsoil and compost, buy it in bulk. What are the disadvantages of raised garden beds? Raised garden beds, the con side, you have to buy soil unless you have a high spot in your yard that you want to lower. They, they have a cost up front. So that they cost upfront money to build. The soil dries out much faster in summer, so required uh, more water is needed. Less sustainable since you need to buy and transport walls and soil. It should raise uh, beds be in full sun. You don't need to have to have a lot of space for a raised bed or building a raised garden bed. Vertical planters are a great, great way to grow. What you do need is a spot that receives full sun for most of the day, at least six hours of sunlight. Those edible plants require lots of sun to uh, mature and fully grow and set forth uh, for harvest. Uh, the sunniest area in your property will be the best spot. How long does soil lasts into a raised bed. Well, ideally, we think it's best to consider replenishing the soil between every season, after every autumn, winter, and spring, and summer harvest. However, if you can only do it once a year, that's all right too. Question, can you fill a raised bed with just soil? The first option for filling your bed is a simple soil mixture. As you may have guessed, this is a simple route you can take. Fill your bed with one-to-one -one mixture of topsoil and compost, then lightly combine with a rake or shovel, or topsoil potting mix 
which has already been added fertilizer that you get at the big box store. Uh, we must watch where we get this compost, uh, where we get it from because of the grazon, which can kill your plants. In these beds, I started filling with topsoil and then add one bag of garden soil. This middle bed here was filled with topsoil, garden lime, and 10-10-10 fertilizer. The topsoil is basically your filler soil, which is needed for, every, uh, needed for everything, from raised garden beds to indoor potting plants. It makes up the bulk of most raised uh, bed soil mixes. It's not very rich in nutrients, but it's necessary. It's a necessary component that contains organic matter. We should ask ourselves, do I need to add anything else to raise bed soil? It is essential to men raise bed soil periodically by adding new soil and organic matter to replenish soil nutrients. Refreshing these raised beds soil regularly with the right soil amendments is the key to keeping your raised bed soil healthy and productive. Cheap way to fill a raised garden bed is to start with fill with top soil and a bag of garden soil that has fertilizer in it or top soil, add garden lime with fertilizer and mix together. Possibly a 10-10-10 mixture would work great with fertilizer. What vegetables are best into a raised bed, people ask? root vegetables, radishes, carrots, turnips, onions, scallop, garlic, beans, tomatoes, potatoes, just about anything you want to grow. They work best in, into loose uh, partially sandy soil which makes them ideal candidate for raised beds. Wood logs, logs buried into the raised bed are beneficiary because they won't uh, need as much soil. That's why using rotting logs can be effective for organic matter for filling raised beds cheaply. I have added rotted pieces of logs in this middle bed here, and it works great as a filler, which in turn turns into the, the nutrients, it turns into nutrients, soil, and you can find also grass clippings, twigs, branches, logs, and other rotting material, and place them into the deep soil. Here at this bed right here, there are rotted logs at the very bottom because this bed right here is higher up. Possibly about 20 inches. You're going to place them deep into the soil in the middle of this bed. This is a low side wall greenhouse which is placed with rotted wood at the bottom of the bed that didn't, uh, didn't get put into the wood stove. And this was a perfect place to add nutrients at the bottom. Is regular potting soil okay for vegetables? The answer, your potting soil for flowers work fine into the vegetable garden, especially if you're growing veggies into containers. Of course, using potting soil made specifically for vegetables and garden would be the best possible scenario. So what is the difference between topsoil and garden soil? Garden soil is topsoil that has been enriched to make it better and suited for plant growth. Amendments may include compost or other organic matter, and some soils, like perennial potting mixes, have added ingredients to encourage the growth of specific types of plants. Into this container is some potty mix that I have made. So check out my video of making two homemade potty mixes. If you want to stretch your dollar, this is the video for you. What is the best, what is the best potty mix for growing vegetables? A lot of people ask. When it comes to potting soil for vegetables, there are a few key ingredients to look for. Vermicolite or perlite, peat moss, cocoa coral, compost, for example, black cow, Black cow, C-O-W, are both great for retaining moisture. Which is essential for plants. It's essential for healthy plants. We all want that healthy plant growth. Now perlite, what I just showed you, is also a great choice 
as it helps to improve drainage and aeration. You want the air to get to those roots. Many people want to know, how do I make my own super soil? This is a bed I'm starting here. It's two beds in one. I haven't completed it yet, but let's go back to the question. How do I make my own super soil? Here you'll see on top I've been throwing eggshells and different types of vegetables, just any coffee grounds that'll decompose and go into that top soil there. Here is a recipe that looks a little different from my video. So I made a video with two recipes of homemade potting mixture, potting soil for your greenhouse, for your containers, for your vertical planter, for all your potting needs. For well, another recipe, how do I make my own super soil? So in this recipe, it's a little different from my video, but you can use eight large bags of high quality organic potting soil with cocoa fiber. Some people call it cocoa core, core, C-O-R-E. And I'm going to spell the next word for you because I'll mess it up with saying it. And it's M-Y-C-O-R-R-H-I-Z-A-E, which is your base soil. You're going to use 25 to 50 pounds of organic worm castings, 5 pounds of bone meal, and 5 uh, bloom bat gruno, which you don't have to use that, but 5 pounds of blood meal would be great, 3 pounds of rock phosphate, and 3 fourths cups of Epsom salt, 1 half cup of garden lime, dolomite, which you can get from Lowe's or Home Depot, So we ask ourselves, and other ask, others ask other people, what helps a plant grow fast? So what makes a plant grow fast and bigger? Because that's what we want, right? Well, water, air, lights, soil nutrients, and the correct temperature, coupled with a whole lot of affection, love, and care, which are the mace the most and basic um, main important, one of the main important items I could say, love factors to make a plant grow faster and bigger. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope that you gain, gain some vital information that will help you into your raised beds. Whether it's in your greenhouse or in the garden or backyard, I've got some in the backyard, or just even into your garden. These key items are very necessary because these days and times we raise seeds up, plants up a little bit differently because we definitely want that bumper crop. So back in the day when I was coming up, we pretty much used uh, compost, manure, horse manure. Uh, we watched the chicken manure because you know it's a hot manure and uh, we put, we just had um, that horse manure to put around the plants we bought their plants from the seed store, which is very cheap. I mean, you would get 50 to 100 plants or cabbage plants for a dollar half, something like that. And you just stick them in the ground and, you know, water them after you stick them in there, poke a hole, stick them in the ground, water them. And then later on, as the plants start coming up, um, then you would put that horse manure around them and you just kept them water and they grew. So today we have a tendency to do things a little bit differently because we really want that bumper crop. We, we want the harvest. We want, if we're going to put this time in this, we, time and money, we want to get uh, the most successful harvest we can get. And I'm hoping through this video that you will get to growing or if you think you might want to grow a little bit, the best thing to do is to start with a raised bed you will not believe how much food that you could get from a raised bed or a little section, a little small place into your yard. It's not going to take much time, but it's going to give you a great harvest. So I thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't uh, subscribed, please subscribe. Help me to get out there in a UT land. 
because there's an algorithm that, you know, unless you get so many likes and comments, you just, you don't get placed out there. But nevertheless, if you have learned anything about this uh, video, if you've learned anything here onto this video, and don't forget to watch my video on how to make homemade potting mix. It's, it's a great way to stretch your dollar. Um, if you're like me and you do a lot of planning, then you got to find every type of way to save on that money. So you don't feel like you're going in a hole with it. You feel like you're, gonna, you're coming out on top with your harvest. But if you learned anything on this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please like, please share, and don't forget to comment. And guys, remember, no matter what you're going through, no matter how hard or difficult it is, no matter how doom and gloom it may seem in this time period we're in, just learn to make it a great day. Trust God. I have to remind myself sometimes, trust God, Cammy. trust God. I was like, oh yeah, you know, we're non-exempt that, you know, we forget in the one that we are to trust. We are going to trust God with our harvest. If we put our faith and trust in Him, He'll make all things good. He'll work it out for our good. All the things we go through, He'll protect us and help us, and he will bless everything we put our hands to. Thanks, guys, for watching, and I'll see you on to the next video. God bless, and make it a great day. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up.